Well, hey, y'all, I'm going to be doing a review on a knife tonight that pretty much needs no introduction. This is the Case Yellow Handle Trapper and Chrome Vanadium Steel. This knife is in the hands of everybody. You probably have one uh, if you're a Case fan at all. Um, I got a lot of history with this knife. Uh, a lot of the guys I looked up to either had a stockman or had this knife, but uh, when I was a kid... I used to ride bulls and rodeo and uh, worked on ranches uh, out here in West Texas. And uh, every single cowboy that you saw, if he was carrying a knife, would be a yellow-handled trapper. I mean, this is pretty much the knife that every cowboy I know carries. And uh, and uh, they'd carry it in a sheath like this. This is, uh, this is a sheath I got from a man who has since retired. Um more saddlery he moved out to hillsboro and when i was uh when i was a kid and i was riding bulls and stuff like he made my first pair of, of shaps rodeo shaps and um i saw him many many years later before he retired and he made this case and uh made a couple holsters for me real good guy uh he retired and i hope he's doing good but anyway this is what the cowboys would you know pretty much like this or a smaller one this is what the cowboys would carry their their uh, yellow-handed trapper in. And I don't know why everybody uh, chose to use the yellow-handled trapper. I think, uh, number one, they're durable. You know, this uh, Durland material that they use is, like, pretty much bulletproof. But number two, I think if you're in a rodeo arena, you're out in the field, or, you know, you're, you're in a, a round pen with a horse or something, and you drop your knife... It stands out. You can see it. It's like a, you know, it doesn't blend in. Yellow, yellow stands out, and where pretty much almost anywhere you drop your knife, you can find it. And I think that uh, that might that might be part of it. But every single cowboy I knew was carrying a yellow handle trapper. And now some of the guys I know that are still ranching, they're carrying uh, more makers, but they're also carrying yellow handle more makers. So go figure. Anyhow, let's get on to the knife. This, uh, if you look closely, you'll notice that the shield is upside down. And uh, the reason that is, is uh, the shield fell out one day. And people talk about case quality. This is a very quality knife. But case has cut a couple corners. Uh, and I'm not saying it in a bad way, but they, they kind of have. And one thing they don't do is they don't pin their shields anymore. And in the old days, the shield underneath it had, you know, a pin on this side and a pin on this side. And it kind of held it to the frame and was squeezed in there. And there wasn't really any way it was going to come out. And now they glue them. And uh, th this knife here has been through everything. It's been through some extremely hot weather and cold weather and every other kind of thing. Anyway, the shield fell out one day and I just happened to, to see it. So I grabbed it. When I got home, I was kind of tired. I'd been out all day. And I just, uh, I got some Gorilla Glue, slapped it in there and glued it up. And then I realized it was upside down. And uh, I didn't really worry about it because uh, it, it kind of distinguishes this as my knife. You know, if, uh, you know, because everybody carries these things. And, uh, you know, if there's a couple guys that are looking for their knife or bar a knife or whatever, I know this one's mine because the... Uh, the case shield is upside down. Anyway, moving on, as you'll see uh, in this little guy, uh, it has uh, two bolsters, one on either end, and the pins. If you look at that, they are they are ground perfectly into that Durlin. That's what they call their. It's not really a plastic. It is a plastic, but it's their own blend. But it really is tough. It's resistant to from gasoline to vinegar to who knows blood every other thing it's uh, resistant to it uh the reason this knife is called a trapper it, it it's not uh a super new design in and of itself like when when this knife was designed it uh th these knives started coming into uh, into their own about the year 1900 and uh case knives wr case and sons released their first trapper in the year of 1920 and uh they just took off they've been a big seller and of course the reason it's called a trapper was that's who this knife was marketed to uh, i don't i don't think they knew it was going to take off with the cowboys and uh 
you know, like the, you know, the Stockman was, was designed for cowboys, but for some reason, this knife has become the ubiquitous cowboy knife. And, uh, yeah, so from 1920 on, it has taken off. And of course, everybody makes them now. You got, you know, from Boker to Rough Rider to custom knife makers that, you know, will charge you $600 for one. Uh, this knife, when I got it, I guess about the time, it cost me uh, $29. You could, uh, that's not where I got it, but I think you could go into Academy Sports or somewhere and you could just pick one up for 29 bucks. Now I think they're running about 50 But it's worth it to me. I, th I think it's worth it. But, you know, at that time, they were uh, they were 29 bucks. Uh, let me show you the blade. Here we go. And... I believe that the blade is about 3.25 inches on that clip point. I'm not sure, but that's what I believe it is. And uh, I know the knife weighs 4 ounces because we were messing around and weighed it one day. So, uh, you know, 4 ounces is not real heavy, especially if you're carrying it in a, a belt sheath. A lot of guys carry it in their pocket or they uh, carry it in what they call a buckaroo sheath. It'll be a, a sheath, you know, like this, but it'll have a string. A leather thong that comes out and attaches to their belt and and uh and they'll pull it out of their pocket they'll fish it out and they'll carry it that way so there's no chance of losing it and uh, like a pocket slip with a with a thong attached to it or you know you you wear it on your belt in a in a nice belt sheath uh the sheath fits pretty tight so i don't think there's any way of coming out but it might you're on horseback and your horse starts to get to bucking or something. You you could you take a spill. You could lose it, or you drink too much and fall out of your truck. You could lose it. So that's probably not a bad idea. Anyhow, uh, you can see that this knife has been used uh, quite a bit, and it has developed a nice patina. Like uh, earlier, I did a review on my my Case Large Stockman, which uh, I absolutely love this knife, and I love this one about as much. But I, I still I still like the Stockman more, but I, I really do love this knife, and I've used it quite a bit. And that patina, uh, if you hadn't watched that other video, it's just a form of oxidization that forms on the blade as you use it. It reacts with acids and other things, and uh, it starts to oxidize. It's a form of rust, but it's, it's a controlled form of rust, and it coats the surface of the metal, this high-carbon steel that Case uses. And... Um, it'll protect it from the, the corrosive rust or that brown rust. And a lot of guys will do this on purpose. They'll get some vinegar or they'll, 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 they'll cram it into a potato and leave it for a while. And that'll form a patina. And, uh, or guys will get mustard and they'll draw a little design. I, I don't do all that. I just use it. And I tell you what, if you have a, if you have a high carbon knife and you want a nice patina, the best way to do it is is to eat uh, barbecue with some good barbecue sauce. That'll that'll do it, you know. Or eat a, eat a steak with some eat a steak with some Heinz 57, and you'll you'll be good to go. Anyway, this is the clip point blade. As you can see, it is uh, like all the cases, chrome vanadium, nice with the uh, the angle of the grind and all that stuff. And just the design of the knife, it takes a razor sharp edge. And this is a good kind of everything blade you can do everything with it and what's cool about a trapper um you don't get three blades but you do get two of them and you get a spade blade and uh they call it a spade blade but like i said this was made for trappers starting around the 1900s and what it was is if you were skinning you see those pelts were pretty expensive when these guys would would trap fur bearing animals and when you were scanning it, you wanted to make sure that you took care of that pelt because that's what you lived by. I mean, that's that was your bread and butter. So they had they developed this style of blade. And when you were when you were gutting the animal, it wouldn't cut, you know, because of this shape. You could get in there, but it wouldn't it wouldn't cut anything that you weren't trying to cut, and it would preserve the pelts. Uh, but since then, um, especially in agriculture, they've used it. I mentioned a lot of times. Uh, they they use this style of blade for uh, for castration and uh, you know pretty much for anything. Though if you you got to cut something off of somebody or something and you don't want to cut what's behind it, uh, this blade lends itself to that. Uh, give you a look around the knife and uh, there we go. We'll look at the 
if I can get it to focus. We'll look at the springs here. Look at the fit and finish. Nothing too fancy. It's it's built really well, as you can see. All the all the uh, transitions are nice and smooth. Uh, we'll look at the centering here. Uh, you you want good centering, but God, some guys get so get so crazy about it that uh, you know. I mean, it's a pocket knife. It's not. I, I don't know what they're what they're expecting, but the centering's pretty good on this one, at any rate. Um, is this knife for you? I think so. I think that, uh, even if you're a guy that carries the, uh, you know, the tactical folders, which I definitely have some by Benchmade. I got a bunch of autos and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's kind of cool to, you know, maybe own one or own a few, but get yourself a, a traditional knife. This is traditional as it gets. And even more so the, uh, the case stockman or a stockman knife. But get yourself a traditional carrot in your pocket. Uh, this one's cool because, like I said, the yellow handles. You get two blades. It's not a yeah. It's not a whiz bang knife that'll come out in a split second. You know, you touch the button and you know. I mean, there may be circumstances, I guess, but I mean, do you really need a knife that'll come out in one millionth of a second? I mean, I don't know. And that's a cool thing about these traditional knives is. Uh, you know, it, it, it harkens back to another uh, era and another another way of thinking. Like, you know, when you took your knife out, you thought about what you were going to cut. Uh, you know, even if you were mounted on horseback, I've seen guys, you know, they, they, they can take this knife out, one hand holding the reins, and they can take this knife out and with one hand open it, you know, they'll kind of put it up against their leg. I, you know, there's different ways to do it. But, I, yeah, I've seen them mount on a horseback, open this knife, and then, uh, you know, do what they're doing. And when they need both hands, they'll they'll shove this knife in between their teeth and bite down on this plastic and do what they're doing. And then reach back up and grab it and go back at it and then close it with one hand. So, you know, I mean, for a long time, this is what you carried. You know, there weren't, there weren't these wonder tactical, uh, you know, laser beam knives out there. there there was these kind of knives and i've seen many a cowboy and ranch hand uh do wonders with the with just a pocket knife like this um it's uh it's i think 50 dollars is still affordable 29 was better but you know things things go up in price uh it's it's kind of collectible it's um uh, it's nostalgic uh this it's yellow this yellow plastic goes all the way back to the to the uh, early 1920s knives. Um, they had a I forgot what it was called. They had a form of plastic. Uh, some of those old knives are valuable if you have one in, in semi good shape because of the uh, the way they used to make that that plastic back in the old days. It would do a thing called outgas, and uh, these this plastic would shrink and deteriorate because they didn't uh, you know they weren't obviously really good chemists uh, back then that hadn't hadn't developed as far and uh you know so the new ones are actually a lot better than the old ones and a lot of guys uh you know because back then when you you bought something you used it if it did if that did happen they would just uh grab a deer antler and make their own uh make their own covers for it which is pretty cool and you'll see you'll see some really interesting ones at you know gun shows in different places where some guy had done that somewhere along the way, those really old, you know, these really old trappers and knives like that, where guys had, uh, had you know, made their own scales out of antlers and wood and stuff like that. There's not a lot to say about specs and stuff. Like I said, it weighs four ounces. This knife has been around. It is in the pockets and on the belts of uh, countless cowboys and uh, probably even some lawyers and politicians and doctors and everybody. This is, uh, you know, for a lot of people, when you think of a case pocket knife, this is the one you think of. They call it yeller, old yeller handle. And uh, it's been around a long time. It's, uh, you know, if you're starting a knife collection, a case knife collection, I would definitely recommend that you get one of these. If uh, you're a little strapped for cash, you can... Uh, I think uh, even now Rough Rider makes a pretty decent trapper with yellow plastic handles. It kind of looks like this. It's not a case, but it's, uh, you know, it'll get you by. It's still pretty cool. 
And another good knife, if you're if you're looking for traditionals, is a sodbuster. That is a a fantastic pattern, and uh, you know it's a single blade knife, and they make those in this this yellow uh, material as well. Uh, anyway, that's just kind of an overview of a knife that is uh, everywhere, and uh, quite a few people have it. It's not as ubiquitous as the uh, sack knives, but it's pretty close. This knife is. Uh, this knife has been around, and it is in the hands of a lot of people. And if you're thinking about getting one, I recommend you do. But if you find one on the ground somewhere and the shield is upside down, uh, let me know because uh, you found my knife. Anyway, I appreciate you all stopping by, uh, and I appreciate all the new subscribers I have gotten. It's uh, really cool. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, I said in, a, in an earlier comment I made, but it's like, uh, you know, it's like a bunch of friends sitting around a campfire and a couple more guys, you know, join you. And uh, the more guys, you know, talking about knives or sharing about knives, the better. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool hobby, and I've met some really cool people in a pretty short amount of time as this channel started to grow. Anyway, I just want to say I appreciate you all. Thank you for stopping by. And uh, if you like it, give me a like. If, uh, if you like what I'm doing, subscribe. Give me a, a thumbs up and all that stuff. Drop a comment. Tell me if you have one of these. In fact, if you're a knife guy, I'd be surprised if you didn't. But anyway, uh, that's it for me. Uh, we'll catch you all down the road.